Welcome back to the Sasquatch Escapes, Chapter 4, Dollar Store Girl. Come grab some breakfast, Grandpa Abe said the next morning as he pointed to a box of donuts. We've got errands to run. Breakfast for donuts? Donuts for breakfast. Back home, Ben always had oatmeal with bananas and whole grain cereal. Thanks, he said, and he took a sugar-filled bite. You'd better keep that bedroom door shut of yours. Barnaby's on the prowl. Ben hadn't yet seen Barnaby the cat, but he imagined him to be a gigantic killer with fangs and red glowing eyes. He checked on Snooze, who was asleep as usual. Then he shut the bedroom door and followed his grandfather out to the car. Although Ben still didn't want to spend the entire summer in Buttonville, he decided as he munched on the donut that things weren't all that bad. His grandfather hadn't made him take a shower that morning and he hadn't asked a bunch of questions like his mom and dad usually did, like, did you brush and floss? Did you put on clean socks? Did you take your vitamins? Since Grandpa Abe was wearing the same exact clothes that he had been wearing when he picked Ben up at the airport, Ben decided to wear yesterday's day's clothes too. He never got to do that at home. But to Ben's disappointment, Buttonville's Main Street looked just as threadbare as the day before. Maybe worse now in the daylight because he could see all the flaking paint, broken windows, and cracked sidewalks. A pair of old men sat on a bench outside the Buttonville hardware store. They waved as Grandpa Abe drove by and Grandpa Abe wove back. A woman washing the windows of the Buttonville diner also waved. Grandpa Abe waved back. The girl with the long blonde hair who had been leaning out of the window last night was now standing outside the dollar store, a broom in her hands. She didn't wave, but she did watch intently as Grandpa Abe parked the car. So, what do you want for dinner? Grandpa Abe said, pulling a canvas hat out of the glove compartment and setting it on his shiny bald head. How about some brisket? A nice brisket. You like a nice brisket, don't you? They make a ready-to-eat brisket at the market. Ben didn't want to point out that they had had brisket the night before. He was still watching the girl across the street, and she appeared to be watching him. Did you swallow your tongue or something? Grandpa Abe asked. Uh, sorry, Ben said. Sure, I like brisket. Then brisket it is. Clutching his cane, Grandpa Abe struggled out of the car. Ben hurried around to the driver's side to help him out. Ah, uh, looks like that pearl petal is coming this way, Grandpa Abe said with a slight nod of his head. The blonde girl was crossing the street, still clutching the broom. She's a nice girl, that Pearl, but a bit of a troublemaker. Watch yourself. The tip of his wooden cane tapped against the sidewalk as Grandpa Abe headed into the food for less market. Pearl was fast. She was like one of those professional speed walkers. The way she swung her arms, the heels of her sneakers barely seemed to touch the ground. The hem of her green dollar store apron flapped against her knees. What do you think that thing was? She asked after she had come to a stop right in front of Ben. A big wide gap sat between her two front teeth. Her cheeks were pinkish and her eyes bright green. She leaned in so close that he could smell her cherry lip balm. Um, Ben paused. He stepped back. Did this girl know anything about personal space? What thing? He knew perfectly what the thing was, but he didn't really want to say. She straightened up, which made her a whole head taller than him. That thing, that thing in the sky last night, what do you think it was? Sure looked like a dragon, Ben thought, but he wasn't going to say that out loud. Maybe it was a bird, a bird. She screwed up her face, but it was huge and it had a long tail. You really think that thing was a bird? You don't think it looked like a, a dragon? Dragons aren't real. Maybe they are, maybe they're not, she said. Hey, what's your name anyway? Ben Silverstein. Well, I'm Pearl Petal. What are you doing in Buttonville, Ben Silverstein? I'm visiting my grandfather for the summer. The whole summer? Your parents sent you here for the whole summer? Are they mad at you or something? 
Ben chewed his lower lip as he thought about making up a story. Maybe he would tell Pearl that his parents had sent him to Buttonville because they were secret agents and they had to go on a dangerous mission. Or he could tell her that his parents were astronauts and they were headed to Mars for the summer. There were lots of stories that were better than the truth. The truth was his parents were arguing a lot and they sent him away for the summer. You sure do wear fancy clothes, Pearl said. I get most of my clothes at the dollar store. You see these shorts? They only cost a dollar. She pointed to her shiny red basketball shorts, which hung below her knees. Ben didn't know how much his brand new jeans had cost, but his mother had ordered them from a fancy catalog. Do you have any brothers or sisters? No, Ben replied. Me either. You're just me and my mom and my dad and my great aunt Gladys, who has trouble remembering things. She lives in our basement. She smells like cough drops all the time. Most people around here are really old like Aunt Gladys. That's because all the families moved away so they could find jobs and they took all their kids with them. She took a quick breath. But there is this one girl. She still lives here. Her name's Victoria. But stay away from her because she can't keep a secret. Believe me, I learned the hard way. I told Victoria that I had found this nest of baby raccoons under my house and that I was feeding them some table scraps. And Victoria told my mom and I got into like huge trouble. Man, this girl likes to talk. I need to um, go help my grandfather uh, in the store. Uh, I'll see you later. And Ben turned to leave. Pearl stepped in front of him. You really think that thing was a bird? She leaned on the broom and stared at him. No, he didn't think it was a bird. Ben Silverstein was no dubby. He knew what he had seen, but in never in a million years was he about to admit it. I saw it before, Pearl said. Last week, I saw it land on the roof of the old button factory. I think it lives there. I'm gonna go investigate later. You wanna come? Grandpa Abe's words replayed in Ben's head. She's a nice girl, that Pearl but a bit of a troublemaker. Watch yourself. Ben didn't want trouble. He wanted to go home. I can't, Ben said. I need to help my grandfather make brisket. Pearl frowned. Well, what are you going to do after you make brisket? Eat it. Well, what then? I'll think of something. Well, just so you know, there is nothing to do in Buttonville. She pulled a stick of gum from her apron pocket and began to chew. She offered him a stick, but he politely shook his head. The bowling alley closed. The movie theater only shows movies on Friday night. We don't even have a swimming pool. Well, unless you count that plastic pool over at the senior center, but it's no fun because the seniors always yell if you splash. No swimming pool? Back home, Ben had a pool in his backyard. Actually, all of his friends had pools in their backyards. Well, if you change your mind, she pointed to the embroidered words on her apron. You'll get more at the dollar store. My family lives above the store. If you see any more birds, let me know. She swept a white button into the street drain and then headed back across the intersection. If the town was as boring as Pearl said, this was going to be a long, uneventful summer. Chapter five, Jelly Bean Man. The food for less market was tiny compared with the grocery stores back home. Just five aisles and one cashier. There was no barista making fancy cappuccinos, no fancy bottles of water from Fiji. The grocery bags were plastic, not canvas, and the daily special was bologna, not goose liver pate. Ben's grandfather stood second in line for the cash register. He had crammed a whole lot of groceries into his cart. There were hot dogs, white bread, mustard, frozen pizzas, egg rolls, bagels and cream cheese, a box of sugar loops and two more boxes of donuts. Ben smiled to himself. No fruits, no vegetables or anything healthy. Duke. Sorry. Great. Crazy Duke. Duke. Thank you. Hello, madame, the man at the front of the line said to the cashier. He wore a long black raincoat, which seemed odd since the day was warm and sunny. I wish to purchase this can of fish broth and this can of condensed milk 
and some kiwi-flavored jelly beans. The cashier, who was a girl with a pimpled-covered nose, tapped her fingernails on the counter. Uh, we don't have any kiwi-flavored jelly beans. Then be so kind as to order them for me. I need them as soon as possible. And he pushed his long red hair behind his shoulders. The cashier took out a piece of paper from the drawer. How many boxes do you want? Two thousand boxes. Two thousand boxes, Ben blurted. That's a lot of jelly beans, Grandpa Abe said. As he leaned on the handle of the grocery cart. You'll rot your teeth eating that much candy. The man slowly turned to face Ben and his grandfather. His red mustache was waxed, so it stuck out in little individual strands. The mustache quivered as the man spoke, reminding Ben of cat's whiskers. I appreciate your concern for my dental health. However, there is no need to worry. I myself am not fond of the kiwi flavored jelly beans. I only eat meat. Only meat, said Grandpa Abe. The man's irises, which were shaped like little half-shaped moons, swelled. His nose was upturned and started to twitch. He sniffed and gazed at Ben. Are you the owner of a Chinese striped hamster? Yes, Ben said with surprise. How did you know? And with very sharp nails, the man plucked a little hair from Ben's shirt. For you see, the striped hamster has a very unique odor, quite different than the standard hamster. And he brought the little hair to his nose, which began to twitch faster. This one is male and young and tender and delicious with pepper. Delicious with pepper. An eerie shiver trickled down Ben's spine he had never heard of anyone eating a hamster before. You must be new around here, Grandpa Abe said to the man. Where are you from? The man straightened. His nose stopped twitching. I am from, um, far away. Two thousand boxes is going to cost you a lot of money, the cashier said. You sure you want to order two thousand boxes? Money is of no concern. The man reached into his trouser pocket and pulled out a wad of cash, which he set on the counter. Because Grandpa Abe and the cashier were staring open-mouthed at the cash, they didn't notice the little piece of paper that drifted out of the man's pocket and landed at Ben's feet. My employer would like the boxes delivered as soon as they arrive. Who do you work for? The cashier asked as she picked up the cash. I am employed by the brilliant and talented Dr. Wu. The man tapped his polished shoe. As a matter of fact, if we could conclude our business here, I do need to get back to work, for I am Dr. Wu's assistant. Buttonville has a new doctor? Grandpa Abe asked. What kind of doctor? A worm doctor. The man replied, Dr. Wu is a renowned worldwide for her work with worms. She tends to their illnesses and their needs. Grandpa Abe and the cashier stared with confused looks. Do you have a pen, dear woman, so that I can write out on the order form? The cashier handed the red-haired man a pen, and while he filled out the order form, Ben reached down and grabbed the piece of paper. It was a recipe card. I can't remember if I showed you the picture. Did I show you? Recipe for artificial dragon's milk using known world ingredients. One can of fish broth, one can of condensed milk. Step one, mix together. Step two, heat until the liquid comes to a boil. Step three, serve piping hot. Ben read it again. Was this for real? The man finished filling out the order form and handed it to the cashier and she read it. It says that you want the jelly beans delivered to the old button factory. The button factory is closed. 
Dr. Wu is renting the old factory. It will house her worm hospital. Then the man collected his grocery bag, which contained the can of fish broth and the can of condensed milk. And after a quick bow to the cashier, he walked to the exit. Ben hurried after him. Excuse me, Ben called. The man turned on his heels. Yes, you dropped this. And Ben handed the recipe card to the man. The man's whiskers twitched as he took the card. Thank you. That's kind of a weird recipe, Ben said. Is it for the worms at the worm hospital? He didn't know anything about worms except for if you cut them in half, they still wiggle. The recipe is not for worms, the man replied. Worms do not drink dragon's milk. Only dragons drink dragon's milk. He offered no further explanation and bowed again and left. Did I hear that man say something about dragons? Grandpa Abe asked when Ben returned to the counter. Uh-huh, said Ben. Oi, gavolt! Grandpa Abe shook his head. Then they began to stack the groceries on the counter. Just what we need. Another crazy person in Buttonville. And that's the end of chapter five. Chapter six, Seahorse Face. You'll have to wait for tomorrow for that one. <laughs>